Okay, everyone, if you've been staying up to date with all the videos that we have been putting out recently, you know that I have been talking about garden soil and that I need to find soil. I ended up finding some soil, believe it or not, some pretty good bagged products that I'm gonna look into. But I realized I actually have soil here on the property that I can fill in this raised bed with. We did find some here and there. I also amended this with some organic fertilizer and different things that I wanna, I wanna put into this bed. Uh, but I realized there's other locations on my yard that have just accumulated a lot of soil over the years. Whether we've been putting down wood chips and they've been breaking down or just much, a lot of mulch has been breaking down. I mean, there's so much material that has kind of formed on this property that I kind of feel honestly like it's not really all that intelligent to be buying more material. I already have material here and what I want to do I have to fill in the rest, the rest of this raised bed. I want to level this off. I want to amend it as well, add some different things to it because I want to plant some more sugar snap peas for shoots. Um, I do have my sugar snap peas for the actual peas themselves, the actual sugar snap pea in the, uh, the cold frame there. But I figure because I have so much of those peas that I germinated and started, that I might as well get, get those in the ground. I also wanna plant my arugula and direct seed that. And all that stuff in that raised bed is gonna do wonderfully because it's raised. It has a lot of soil temperatures to it. It's got a nice southern exposure, full sun. And um, we're gonna cover it with mesh and it's gonna keep it all nice and warm. So what I'm doing over here, because I've realized, again, I have soil in different locations of this property. One of them is actually right here where my persimmon tree is. And um, my persimmon, believe it or not, actually has too much fertility, too much soil. And in fact, it's probably negatively impact, excuse the microphone if there was a noise, it's negatively impact the production on these trees. You don't want to feed your trees too much, guys, I've realized. Certain things, certain trees, specifically persimmons is really a good one that you don't want to be overfeeding them. Because what's going to happen is they're just going to grow and grow and grow and not actually produce a whole lot of fruit. So what I'm doing is I'm clearing out a lot of this wood, these, these like bigger materials up here on the surface of the soil. And then what I'm going to do is take my shovel, fill up this gorilla car here with this compost this beautiful beautiful compost there's worm castings in here there's actually tons of red wigglers in here this is a beautiful beautiful soil that I would like to not kind of we're gonna excavate it out of here to be honest with you guys um, now I don't want to get, I don't want to go, you know, have it sit here forever because if it sits here forever, we just still have a fertility issue where we have too much fertility in the soil. And that to me is probably a detriment to this, the production of my Rosianca persimmon. Lesson learned, never put any organic fertilizer down on these trees. It's just a mistake. And uh, we're going to try not to damage any of these roots, but I'm already pulling up, I just pulled up a root by accident. We're gonna put this mulch to the side simply because I, when I wanna excavate the soil out of here, we're gonna come back in with some wood chips and we're gonna fill this back in with wood chips, just a thin layer of wood chips. And in fact, I may not even wanna cover this with wood chips, I'm thinking. And the reason for that is because it's kinda like a fig in that I would like to have more heat, more soil temperatures to these trees. And that is gonna net me a better crop, a better season. Um, just overall, I think it's better for these more subtropical species of trees, like the fig, like the jujube. They like to wake up as one of the last things in the yard to wake up. So, as a result, I think I may even just excavate the top three inches here of soil that I have created over the years of putting down 
mountains and mountains of mulch, leaves, comfrey, wood chips, any material that I had went here, even the prunings of the, of the tree, went down here below the tree and it turns and has turned into an absolute ton of soil that I can use for that, that raised bed. And I think it's a win-win because if you think about it, we're now correcting the fertility issue of this tree, as I said, and we are solving another issue where we need soil somewhere else. And I'm just trying to really get out the big pieces here, guys, because I don't want these big pieces in my soil in a garden soil, this is gonna steal away some nitrogen. Um, ideally, I guess I would just shovel all this up and screen it out, but I don't have that ability. I don't have a screen. So I'm just kinda being careful here and eyeing this out and trying to take out some of these bigger pieces. And I guess I could do this anywhere else in the yard that has something like this. The, Believe it or not, the mulberry tree has a similar story that I can show you guys. Where we used to have the Illinois Everbearing right here and there was a ton of built up soil in this location right here. So it's very fertile. I probably could dig through that and get myself even more soil if I wanted to. A couple of the brands that I decided to go with, with the bagged products, I think one is called the Happy Fox. Another one is uh, in Maine, um, Coastal Maine or something like that. If anybody's ever heard of these, let me know. There's a lobster shell one from Maine, Coastal Maine or something like that. And I'm trying to think the third one here, but there was about three different bag products in the area that I found Oh, the third one was actually a just natural potting soil. It's not the soil conditioner that I'm used to. It's the potting soil. Uh, but the potting soil, I think has some peat moss in it, which I don't necessarily like to use as most of you guys know at this point. Just taking out some of these bigger pieces. We have actually have a sucker right here. Don't really need that, but I could dig it up. I mean, look at this black, black soil that I'm taking up out of here. And it's many, many layers. And there is some surface roots in here. Don't get me wrong, guys. You know, I'm probably damaging some of that surface root, but look at that amazing soil. Isn't that crazy? I mean, that's from, like I said, three years of building soil in this location. And there's just so much of it here. <laughs> it really is. I don't want to damage all these roots though. I'll tell you that. So I'm going to take out what I can without really damaging this too much. And then uh, that'll be it. We'll fill up that raised bed with this soil here. And we can do our planting. So I don't know how much more of this you guys want to watch, but I imagine you guys want to know how much I got out of this. And you can do this too. You know, it's got me really thinking like, why don't I start building my own soil? I wish I had my own land guys and I could sort of designate. I hope you guys have been able to see me this whole time, but I could sort of like designate different areas, you know, let's say I had, you know, an area somewhere over here or something. I could designate this area for compost, let it age, maybe have some bark, let the bark age. You know, have some areas of building soil. I think that'd be obviously a really great idea and I know a lot of people do it. I'm gonna bring you guys around and show you so far just what we have excavated out of here. Still a lot more I can get to. It's just amazing, I think. You really concentrate these wood chips in one location, and over three years, they create some really great stuff. 
This is wonderful, wonderful soil. There's definitely some of that native clay mixed in. Here's that big piece, right? Got to get rid of this. But overall, I mean, this is like really fantastic fertile soil. So very happy. There's even some rocks in here, which is not horrible. And uh, yeah, I don't even have to amend this, fertilize this, add micronutrients to it. It's got everything in it, I'm sure. So I wanna thank you guys all here for watching this one. Uh, yeah, this is something to think about, I think. I just, it never really occurred to me <laughs> that I've been building soil all this time and some of these trees don't need it. Uh, some areas definitely do and we're gonna to continue to build soil in those locations, but uh, like this persimmon, it doesn't need this fertility. In fact, it's probably hurting it, so. I wanna thank you guys here for watching this one. I actually do believe, I'm gonna to subscribe to the belief of no mulch on the, the persimmon and the figs and even the jujubes here. Uh, we're gonna increase that heat, increase those metabolisms and get these persimmons to ripen potentially before a frost. I think that's another goal because yeah, they'll ripen after a frost but the other big thing is that that frost kinda of comes in and, and uh, doesn't really help the situation out. I think for optimal fruit quality, what you really want is for these trees with the help of the leaves, with the photosynthesis, is to fully ripen the fruit and then uh, pick the fruit. You know, that frost can come in and help that process along and speed it up, but ideally at the end of the day, I think it's better to, to have it all complete. And that's why I even, I'm starting to think about getting earlier persimmons that'll ripen before this whole process, all that frost comes in and does that whole thing. So yeah, thanks for watching this one guys. Check us out on Fig Boss, Instagram and Facebook. We'll talk to everybody soon, all right? Take care guys.